Okay, this was the part where we said, okay, what kind of things we have to look into, where it could be the pitfalls, right? And if, if you use Kodo, you're always on the safe side because they will do this, the job for you. Sometimes if you want to program it yourself from the scratch, for what reason ever, I, I could not imagine of one reason, but in case, make sure that the, at least the random number generator works. And the best way to test it, run it binary and count the number of extra packets. If this is way more than 1.6, you know something is wrong. Okay? Good. Now, we are now more or less towards the end of this coding for transport. I mean, we talk about um, examples and whatsoever, but we had two ways of uh, looking into coding. Right? One was inter and the other intra network coding. I'm not talking about analog at the moment. Let's, uh, just the two. And just if you recap, on the interflow network coding, what was the good thing? It was really fast, right? Low complex. On the bad side, you need certain scenarios. You need flows that you can code together. You need to know the traffic and whatsoever. This overhearing was great, but how can I really understand how overhearing um, can, how can I make it robust, okay? And it also, this was a question, we had it already when we had Alice and Bob and we did the XOR. And we found out if you do, for example, Alice sends to the relay, Bob sends to the relay, X or out. There was this one question. I mean, we always say it broadcast, but in Wi-Fi, we never broadcast it. We always had to send to one, and the other one is over-listening it. So to whom should you send now? And what's the difference? If you're the relay and you send to Alice, and Alice does not get it, what will you do? You will repeat it, because this is Wi-Fi. You get an acknowledgement, you don't get an acknowledgement. But if you send to Alice, and Alice will tell you, I got it, what is with Bob? You have no information what happens to Bob. And at that point, we said, to make this more reliable, why don't we do, when we do this XOR, RL and C end to end on top, just to make it robust. And there was a new idea starting. The idea was, a combination of inter and intraflow networks. So there is this XOR type of coding, like COPE and CatWoman on the one side, and then there's RNC type of coding, like MORE and others on the right side. So can we somehow combine that? And from MIT came COPE and MORE, so we said, okay, then we combine COPE and MORE to CORE. So what are we doing? Let's look at the one example, this cross. We talked about this a long time, right? So um, how can we make a cross better. If you have two sources, two destinations, so the source one wants to send to destination one and source two wants to send to destination two under the help of the relay because there's no direct link. Then you remember that in an optimal world, while the sources are sending to the relay, the devices are overhearing the information that they're not interested in, so to give the relay, the opportunity to create coding potential, combining the two inputs into one and broadcasting it to the destinations, instead of forwarding twice the packet, halfening the rate from the relay to the destinations. And this makes the whole thing better. But I hope also that you remember that we had a problem, what if one of the overhearing went bad? Then the whole system does not work anymore, right? Okay, so um, let's do the following. We have here one source, here the other source, exactly the picture that you had before, right? And you have one relay. Let's assume now that every source has three packets. So this has packet P1, P2, P3 in blue, uh, sorry, in red, and this has, has the one in, in blue. So what happens now is, first we send one packet. And what is this packet? It's a random linear coded packet. So we would ask Kodo, give me a packet and combine these three. So it's alpha P1 plus better P2 plus gamma P3. And we send a coded packet out here. Okay, so what happens is 
In the first slot, we are sending out a packet where we have seen packet one, packet two, packet three. Okay? We are sending it here, but he can overhear it. This destination, I saw a red packet. I don't know what the red P1, P2, P3 is. It's just a coded packet now. So then we will say, let S2 send a little bit. The same thing happens here. Nothing different. There's just the overhearing. And at this, this point of time, the relay has it. And what will it do? What should the relay do? So normally you would say now recoding, right? What you wanted to say that? We're not doing a recode. Or maybe we do a recode, but we do a very simple recode, which is we just do an XOR. An XOR between S1 and S2. And what comes out is a purple thingy. So it's a little bit of red, a little bit of blue. And we are mixing it together. So hopefully we'll get it out. So let's do it now again. Um, sorry, um, just to show it. Once we have done that, because both of them have something, we can right away at the destination two, take the purple packet that we got received and subtract the red one. And then this becomes a blue packet. And here it becomes a red packet. So now we're combining both of them. Ah, not bad. So let's try again. Because so far it looks awesome, but yeah, you could have done this with XOR alone also, right? Where's the advantage of coding the packets together? So let's make it like this. S1 is sending to the relay. The destination 2 overhears a coded packet of source 1. And now also source 2 is sending to the relay. But this time, overhearing did not work. What will the relay do? The same as before, because you cannot know what happened to the overhearing. Right? XOR it, and you will come up with this. And now what happens here is this will be exactly as before. We clean out the blue. And this one, nothing. You just leave it there. OK, then let's do this again. Now S1 is sending. Um, wait a minute, is this OK now? OK, it goes through. Um, then also. S2 is sending. And now the relay will say, guys, I have all the information from you. Right? It has the full ring from both sides. And it will send to the sources, stop. You, you are done now. Hopefully early enough that we don't get just another packet. If not, they will send once more. But I will shut them down now. That's the task of the relay. So after he sent this, Wait a minute, what was the point here in um, he sends it, he can overhear it. Fine, OK. And now you can see there's something missing. So he will send one more purple thing. But the purple did not arrive here, but it arrived here. So now just to show you some errors in the, in the game, right? And because of that, he will say, ah, OK, this one I can clean up. Nothing happened here. So he will take a new recoding, but this time a recoding, not an XOR. Now he's recoding and shoots something out. It's still purple, and you do this. And now, of course, what you can do is, you have red, red, red. Therefore, you can clean up this and make this blue, right? Oh, yeah, then, then let's do it like this. We, we just move them a little bit to give you. So this is red, 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 right? With that, you can clean up this. You understand this, right? And therefore, this, this becomes blue. And then you can clean up the mattress itself. Here's a little bit more complicated. Now, um, how does this work? So you, have, you cannot clean up one and then the other. You have to clean it up as a 6 by 6 matrix, so to speak. But you also can clean up this. So where's the advantage? Here you see the relatively throughput over the offered load. And this picture we have seen many times. So you see if the load from S1 and S2 is increasing, the system ca capacity is used more and more and more until a for the forwarder will bail out. OK? And then you have this characteristic. You remember this graph? OK. The core and the cope are exactly the same. They go up and they go down. That is what we expected. 
So where's the advantage from the new approach versus the pure um, cope-like or XOR coding that we used before? There's no advantage. The advantage only kicks in when there are errors. This is an error-free, and you can see it here, error in the cross, zero. Now, if I add a little bit of errors here, 30%, for example, what do you see here? The whole thing goes down because there's now only 70%. So it shrinks by 70%. So interesting is that now the core is still stable. They're going down, some, but the, the cope is going down. In the paper of cope, they said, if the error rate is larger than 10, you should not use cope. The reason is, um, you see now in this area, it's even worse than the forwarding. That's not good. If we increase it further, and I think when you, what I told about Wi-Fi so far, if you don't do the re repetitions, you can lose packets with a chance of from 40 to 60% easily. So if you then go to 80%, you see the cope is even always worse than the uh, forwarding. But interesting is that the gain from core to the forwarding is always this 3 dB. Independent from the error rate, we are there. This is theory, right? And theory is really nice. It works always, but if you then bring it to the real device, then it does not work anymore. So what we did, we implemented this. And here are some values that you could see. Um, where to start with? There's the forwarding approach, where you see the normalized throughput over the erasure rate. And this goes down dramatically, right? That you can see here. Now, if you take the cope, in the beginning, cope is way better. But if you increase, and here you see the 10% that they were really addressing in the paper, you see pff, cope is now worse than the forwarding. And then we have this core approach with no feedback, where we, don't, where we cannot stop the sources yeah, to shut up, and, the other, and also no recording. And then we have here the core, and um, there's the optimal. What is optimal normalized throughput? It's 1 minus the error rate. And look how close we are with this um, core approach to the optimal curve. We're not losing so much. Okay. We have done of that in impl implementation. We showed it to IETF. So there were five laptops. There were real cameras, live cameras, and they were sending it. You can run around with them, and it was super duper um, stable. It was quite impressive. And then you could switch between cope, core, or forwarding. If you switch to forwarding, you had no chance because there was so much interference at the ITF. There are 2,000 people sometimes, so there's so much Wi-Fi interference. But if you had the coding and you were close together, the code was very good. But if you bring them out a little bit because they had this ad hoc networking span, then you see um, how, how good and how robust this approach is. So with that, I would say very interesting approach to combine these aspects. right? Still, there was a little bit of the traffic pattern still, but if you understand this, then there is gain for you. Why not? So when we go then to this nice matrix, then you see, okay, wait a minute. We had the digital domain. We had static networks where plan planning was um, possible because um, then we could maybe apply digital intercession network coding, right? Or if we have dynamic networks, we take the digital intra-session network coding, right? And then we said, okay, there is something where we can map this. So there's this world and this world. Now, what is in the analog world? So here, we know that we can do something with, which is interflow coding on analog. Is there something where we can even code intraflow with analog? So just to complete it, right, how can we do that? Just want to say the crossover here, right? This is the, cope, the, the core that you have just seen, right? But there are other things that you can do, other combinations. But let's talk about this. Is there a way that we don't just code over the flows, analog, but over packets? 